Welcome back. It's 8-11. And imagine if you didn't know anyone on Earth who was your biological relative. That's the reality for most adopted children. But nowadays, it's not just always making families bigger, but also more colorful. And here to talk about adoption and multiracial families is Dennis Bisgar, the head of Kingswood Oxford School. And thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, I hate to say that it kind of follows the trend in Hollywood where it's like, oh, let's just, you know, take kids from other countries mm -hmm. and, and blend them into our families. But there's so many other things that we need to take into consideration as well, huh? Sure. I think it's nice in, 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 in a certain way that, uh, that families uh, who are prominent are adopting kids. But right. I think it, it brings the issues to the table. I think most importantly is to think about uh, the triad of the adoption experience. There's a child, there's a birth parent, and there are the adoptive parents. Um, it's important for us to, to realize that many families are formed in different ways. I think oftentimes adoption is thought about as a lifelong experience, but it really is a, it's a one-time event where family is formed. And I think uh, most adoptive families internally are just as any normal other family and oftentimes it's the external, it's the, it's the outsiders looking in that feel it's odd because you have folks from various parts of the world together. Now, I mean, adoption in itself is, is, is a process that, mm -hmm. I mean, even it comes to whether you explain to a child when they're older, sure. you know, you're adopted or not, but then when you bring in other race, other ethnic ethnicities into this, then it becomes, uh, th there's a whole other element that's into that as well. There is. Uh, I think successful adoption mm -hmm. is, can, can be done very well if the parents are very comfortable with their own race as ethnicity and at the same time they are speaking positively about the race as ethnicity, uh, cultural back makeup of, of the child. Um, I've seen families where assimilation is, is the key point or we talk about being colorblind. I don't think that's a good way to go. And I've seen families where you almost overdo it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, the child may be Chinese, for example, and you go to China you know, every single year and that becomes the, the, the main cultural norm. I think it's very important for the kid to feel uh, comfortable and at ease in, in both cultures. Right, now tell me about a workshop that you have going on at the school coming up. Uh, at Kingswood Oxford School uh, this coming Sunday, uh, I do a workshop that I've done many times before in various parts of the country from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, and it's open for educators, it's open for families who have the transracial adoption experience, mm -hmm. anybody who's interested in, in the topic. Okay, and this is going on Saturday, Sunday? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday from 2 to 4 at Kingswood Oxford. At Kingswood Oxford. Yes, yes. And um, basically what you're going to be talking about uh, adoption and... I'm going to talk about uh, how it's really part of the normative experience. Uh, I'm going to give advice to both parents and educators. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, just like in any other family, uh, the adopted uh, experience uh, is unique and individual. So I'll give some, some broad information as to what people should pay attention to. Great. Dennis, thank you so much for being here. Thanks and of course, me. you can find more information, of course, on this workshop as well on our website at fox61.com.